Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you the new Joy Toy Cosidon figure. As you can see here, I've got four of them. So I, I semi-army built them. It's I guess you can call it a squad. But I got four of these. I pre-ordered them off of Berry Berry. I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard of that. Uh, but they were the first ones I found that had this figure available. So I pre-ordered them from there. I think they're available now on Gundammit Toys, probably, I think, maybe Locker Toys, and of course, uh, Berry Berry, where I got them. I don't know anything about this franchise. I only know what I've read off of, um, you know, the internet, and it looks like it's a late 70s Japanese show. Um, has something to do with dinosaurs and time travel. Um, it was, you know, futuristic uh, sci-fi for its time. And that's about where it ends for me with my knowledge of this of this property of this franchise i picked this figure up basically because of how cool it looks um how unique uh the uniform the color everything is and i have to say i've had this guy open for about two weeks now and i've been playing with him quite a bit you could probably have seen him in a couple of my other videos but he is a wonderful figure all right so here is the packaging on the left and you can see this if you can see this little symbol right here this appears on the figure in a couple different spots i'll try to point that out to you when i show you the figure a little closer up but this is the box here this is whoops there's knocked him over there's the back of the box pretty basic um but still quite nice it's got some cool you know artwork on it and let me open this guy up for you. I'll show you what it looks like in the package. All right, and this is how he looks in the package. Um, he, you know, he's got the, looks like two swords there, but it's actually just one. And I'll show you that in a second. And he does have a, a gun um, on his on his belt there on a, in a holster. I'll show you that too. But this is how he comes. Uh, black, red on black. Always looks pretty good. And so here he is. All right, guys, here's a closer look at the accessories that come with the figure. There are 12 different hands, a sword, a gun, a sheath for the sword, and a sword hilt. And it came with two extra joints in case you break, I think, for the wrist. Now, for this figure, they've done something a little different. You can see there with the accessories. They have two different types of hands. There's a hand that's connected directly to, like, the glove or like the cuff of the glove which I have on the left here and then the glove uh, as the at the hand and cuff is a separate piece which is on the right I have one of each because I wanted to have the the more gun holding hand on his right and the more sword holding hand on his left and I could have done that with either one but I kind of wanted to see how it worked and it's basically, you know, the exact same thing, but the point of articulation now on the cuffed hand is in the middle of the forearm rather than at the wrist. So, you know, it's it's a plug and play to each their own, sort of choose what you like, how it looks better. Um, I think either way it looks good. I kind of prefer it how it looks as one piece, but I think the more traditional articulation at the wrist is, is more what people will like. So it's nice that they give you an option to do both. As you can see here, I have one on each hand, and I think it looks just fine. All right, and here he is fully fitted out for battle. He's got his gun, and he's got his sword. He is carrying the sheath. And I'm just going to say, you know, I really don't like when toy companies give you that sheath with the sword. They won't really go into it. I'm not sure if it's a cost cutting thing or a design thing, but I would rather that sword just be able to fit right in there. Um, it seems like Acid Rain starting to do this now too. I've seen, uh, I don't actually have it on a figure, but I've seen some reviews of uh, swords that aren't going into their sheaths anymore and it's just a handle just like this figure. And you know, I don't really like it. It's not bad, but you know, every time you want to switch it out, you've got to get that other piece and put it in there rather than just you know put it in there i'm not sure if it's a cost cutting thing or what um and, but i want to point out now is the uniqueness of this guy's gun um it's really kind of weird looking 
Um, it's got like a wide end to it, you can see there. And when you look at it straight on, it uh, it's quite different. Um, I like it though. I like the different of this figure, you know. Even the shape of his helmet, you know. It is very uh, Power Ranger or Ultraman-ish. It's, you know, the, the shape of the helmet, it's, just, it's very round. It's not like a, a typical helmet. Um, but I like it. I like the uniqueness of it. I obviously, I army built this guy a little bit, or I squad built him, I'll say. And I feel like I kind of want one more and to change out maybe his head or or maybe I'll, I'll do something a little different to him to make him stand out as like the commander. But it's a, it's a good figure. Let me see if I can get him a little closer so you can see um, that symbol that I pointed out on the box. He does have it right there in the center of the helmet. Let me see if I can point at it with this sword here, but he does have it right there on the center of his helmet, that that symbol right there. It's really small, and he also has it molded, the shape, but it's not colored on his belt buckle right there. So they put a lot of detail on this figure. Um, I think that these little, these little cartridges or something here, they look like shotgun shells to me. If you guys have ever seen shotgun shells, that's what those look like to me. He's got them on his boots as well um he's got looks like a, like a sort of uh, a rivet or something on his shoulder like you would on like a military sort of uniform he's also got one on his neck in the back there this is a really good figure i think it's kind of cool too it's kind of funny he's got these uh, elbow pads but they're actually they're not on the elbow they're like just behind the elbow but you can't really see that um, unless you bend it if it's flat like that it looks like it's right on the elbow but then when you bend it it's actually behind the elbow and he's got that same style of pad on his his knee there but this is a really good figure i really like him um he's really cool he's just uh, you know, he's so unique and that was one of the reasons I really wanted him, uh, you know, because he just adds a lot of variation. And I also like the shininess of the red on his uniform, um, the gloss of it. It's very unique. This guy's going to fit right into my sci-fi stuff. Um, he looks, he's just amazing. You know, I'm, I'm really happy with him and I would, um, I would suggest him to anyone if you're on the fence that he is definitely worth it. You know, he's got all the joy to articulation, so you're getting, you know, a premium 118, you know, figure when it comes to articulation. He saw all the different hands. Um, you know, he's got the gun, he's got the sword, he's got the sheath. Um, so he comes, you know, he's got, he's got enough accessories um, to offer some variation. Um, he, you know, he really stands out. And these four guys, they're going to look really good. I'm going to have them fighting, you know. Maybe I'll have him fight him some of these Tau, these Tau warrior guys or uh, some stormtroopers, you know, but they are going to look great. I'm really happy with this figure and I would recommend them if, if you're on the fence. All right. Now for a little size comparison, um, we've got a Jinx G.I. Joe retaliation on the right. And I think it's a Jeff Jet or Jeff Jungle from the comic adventure heroes from zika toys on the left and you can see he's just a bit over these two uh that he's being compared to tend to be more on the 375 side um and he's more of a four inch a one a true 118 but i think it goes well together you know he's just a he's a bigger guy he's a bigger boned guy he's a little bit taller he's got a helmet on but i think it goes just fine Okay guys, now here is the Cosidon figure compared to two Star Wars Vintage Collection figures. On the right is the Death Trooper and on the left is a Purge Trooper from the Gaming Greats line. And you can see that he's almost exactly the same height as the Death Trooper, who tends to be a bit tall in the Star Wars universe. And he's a little bit taller than the Purge Trooper. Now the Cosidon figure being Joy Toy, he is a bit stockier, a bit... Um, like thicker in the chest and the arm but I still think this goes well together and it fits in especially if you're taking photography um, when they're compared and they're standing up directly next to each other they they look a little bit off but 
in a battle pose or in a, you know, in a photo shoot where they're squaring off shooting or, you know, sword fighting or something, I think it works well. All right, and for our final comparison, there is an Acid Rain Eric K figure, a Action Force Warhol figure. I put a Boss Fight Studio Phantom in the back there, and there is the another Joy Toy, the Bo Yang Fang uh, character there waving back to you. So you can see, even though some of these guys aren't in the same genre um, as the Cosidon figure, they are all in the same scale and they all do fit well together. All right, I hope that you enjoyed those comparisons and my overview of the Joy Toy Cosidon figure. And now we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna pose this guy up and put him in action.